Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Michelle Rosado, and I work at the Connecticut State Department of Education. Uh, thanks for joining us this afternoon for um, our overview of SSD. We're kind of um, tailored it for new SSD coordinators, but um, there is some upfront information that's beneficial to all coordinators. So stick around and then we'll let you know when we're getting to the old stuff and then you can drop off. Um, and then of course, we're gonna be planning other trainings as we get closer to the administration of the test. As we had mentioned last week um, on the overview for coordinators, we'll be doing an in-person session and we'll also be doing some Teams training. So whatever works best for you. Um, so I'd like to just have my colleagues introduce themselves. We'll start with Deirdre. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Deirdre Ducharme. I work with Michelle and, and Adrian on the Connecticut SAT School Day, and I support you and your SSD coordinators in the planning and preparation for students, you, the students' use of accommodations and supports on statewide assessments, including the SAT School Day. I'm available if you have any questions along the way, so feel free to reach out via phone or email. And I'll pass the I'll pass the baton on to my colleague Adrian from College Board. Hi everybody, I'm Adrian Cupper. I am the Executive Director of Outreach and Implementation at the College Board. Um, I get I have the privilege of supporting the Connecticut implementation of the Connecticut SAT School Day. Um, and from a College Board side, I'm here to support everybody. We work very closely with Michelle and Deirdre to make sure you guys get what you need. Great. Okay. So we're still getting people coming in um, to the meeting, so um, we'll just be admitting them, but you won't even notice that. So everybody is actually in mute right now, and um, but you can use the chat to write any questions that you have, and we can use um, the raise your hand feature if you did want to ask a question and we'll be able to unmute you. So um, just a few things. Uh, thanks for attending. This session is being recorded and will be posted to the Connecticut SAT School Day website. We actually have copies of the slides from this session posted to that website. And when I um, get a moment, I will pop that website link into the chat. Um, there also have been added um, as a file into this meeting, but I know that not everybody can access when I add files into the meeting so right so we talked about this last week um that there was really only one big change um in terms of what's going on for testing this year and that's that the the non-standard uh registration uh roster, I mean, the non-standard administration roster or the NAR has been changed and it's made more user friendly. Um, and there's a little bit of information on it here. You'll be able to download PDF or CSV forms, and um, we're going to give you more information about that as soon as we have that um, available. And it looks like this will be available in late January, but we'll have more information that we'll share via email with you. And uh, I'm sure many of you know, because it was announced last January, the College Board is transitioning all of their assessments to a digital format. They're developing that right now. It will be the College Board's own proprietary uh, platform. Um, not, We won't be using uh, Cambium's Tide anymore for SAT after this year. So we're going to be Assessing in the same manner that we did last year um, for your grade 11 students, they're going to be using a computer. They're going to be taking the test um, through College Board's Tide, um, and that's how it's happening this year. So no changes to the way you administered it last year to this year. But we'll be giving you more information as uh, more details are available from the College Board, but this begins in school year 23-24. So school year 23-24, College Board is moving to digital. Um, and there is more information on the College Board's website. And there's our test days right there. So feel free to choose whatever day you want to, choose to test your grade 11 students. You don't have to test everybody on the same day. You can use whatever days you want. You can, you can um, test students for the makeup tests 
you don't have to wait until April. You can use any of the dates after you've done your um, administration, your primary date. You can choose any of those dates to do the makeup. You don't have to wait for April. And I'm going to turn it over to Deirdre. She's going to take you through the accommodations and special populations. Great. Thanks, Michelle. Good afternoon. And thanks for joining today's overview for SSD coordinators. In this presentation, I will cover information about eligibility for accommodations for students with an IEP or 504 plan. I'll discuss the processes used to document accommodations using the College Board's SSD online system, and we'll review accommodations and supports that are available to students when taking the online Connecticut SAT school day. So what are accommodations and who qualifies for them on the Connecticut SAT school day? Accommodations are changes in procedures or materials that increase equitable access during assessments and they're available only for students for whom there is a documented need, such as in an individualized education plan or IEP or a 504 plan. Assessment accommodations generate valid assessment results for students who need them and allow such students to show what they know and can do on statewide assessments. The student's IEP or 504 plan must specify which accommodations will be used during testing and should generally reflect those supports that students use during instruction and during school and district wide tests. Decisions related to an IEP are made by the planning and placement team PPT and they should include feedback by the parent and or guardian and at least one teacher and an administrator. Students are strongly encouraged to participate as well so that they fully understand how accommodations work when taking a, a paper pencil SAT as well as taking the online Connecticut SAT school day. Keep in mind that some accommodations needed for paper pencil tests may not be applicable when taking online assessments, given the range of embedded universal tools and accommodations made available through the test delivery interface. The students should know what alternate online assessment accommodations are available to them and how to use these accommodations prior to testing. To support your understanding of accessibility supports between digital and paper-based testing, we've created an accommodations crosswalk for comparison. This resource is referenced later in, your presen in this presentation, and it is posted to the Connecticut SAT School Day webpage. And finally, language supports are available for English learners and multilingual learners. They include a word-to-word -word glossary, as well as a native reader of test directions only, if appropriate for the student at the time of testing. Other supports for this population will be discussed later in the presentation. The key takeaway, however, is that SSD coordinators should collaborate with appropriate educators to determine which students require language acquisition supports and which supports should be available and are appropriate when taking the Connecticut SAT school day. So consider the following, what processes and documentation will be used to determine which supports are needed for your English learners and multilingual learners, and who will make the decisions for your EL and MLs. And finally, another assessment consideration is that for a small group of your 11th grade population, Students may qualify for the Connecticut alternate assessments for English language arts, mathematics, and science. These alternate assessments are designed for students with significant cognitive disabilities. There is a separate process for registering these students for alternate assessments, and I will discuss this information later in the presentation. Deirdre, am I on the right slide? You are. Okay, all right. I yep. just didn't know you, if, you, if are. you, okay. We're good to go. So now I'm going to walk our SSD coordinators through the process for identifying accommodations for kids with IEPs and 504s. So this year, districts are transitioning to a new IEP process using the Connecticut SEDS online system. 
In the system, PPTs will indicate the supplementary services students need during instruction and assessment. The district and statewide testing page includes information for teams to, compl to complete in which they'll indicate the district and statewide assessments applicable to their students. So here, teams will indicate any accommodations that are relevant to their student based on their grade appropriate statewide assessments. In the 11th grade state assessment section, as shown on the slide, the system includes the Next Generation Science Standards, NGSS, and the Connecticut SAT School Day Assessment. Next to each corresponding assessment, the team will determine if the student will test with or without accommodations. As indicated on the slide, the student will not take the NGSS with accommodations. However, they will use accommodations on the Connecticut SAT school day. To add designated supports and accommodations, select the box as shown by the blue arrow. Michelle, if you select the next slide, we'll now see the drop down menu with a list of accommodations available for the Connecticut SAT school day. These accommodations may not reflect the range of accommodations listed by the College Board's SSD online system, but they do capture the overarching accommodations available to the Connecticut SAT school day. As a reminder, regardless of your student's IEP or 504 status in the Connecticut said system, all Connecticut SAT school accommodations must be submitted by the SSD coordinator directly to the College Board's SSD online system. Data from CTSEDS does not sync or upload to SSD online or the College Board's TIED system. Furthermore, regardless of documenting accommodations in CTSEDS for the purposes of the Connecticut SAT school day, all accommodations must be separately requested and approved in SSD before use on the Connecticut SAT school day. This process does not change from previous years, but it is important to know this process because the College Board manages all supports and accommodations related to their assessments, including the PSAT, the SAT, and AP exams. Next slide. Teams also can add school and district assessments such as the PSAT, SAT, ACT, or assessments such as WN, NWEA using the district statewide testing page in CTSEDS as shown here on the slide. Under the district-wide assessment section, type in the name of the assessment and indicate if the student will participate with or without accommodations. Then you can add the accommodations in the appropriate text box and save. Next slide. Who is there, there is a there's a question in the um, in the chat about why do we have to enter into CT SEDS if we have to apply separately in the SSD system? Um, as mentioned, the College Board is responsible for maintaining the request and approval process for all students participating on their branded assessments, and that includes the Connecticut SAT school day. And if you need further information, you can try to contact me later and we can have a conversation. Who is responsible for overseeing the submission of accommodations for the Connecticut SAT school day? The SSD coordinator, which more than likely is you since you're attending this presentation, is the key person in a school to coordinate all activities surrounding accommodations. Typically, there is one SSD coordinator who is the primary coordinator in a school, but if needed, you may have more than one individual help you in this process. In order to gain access, schools will need an attending institution or AI code issued by the College Board. All districts should have an AI code, but if you represent a new program or if you aren't sure if you have one, please contact our office. If you are a new SSD coordinator, you will need to follow specific steps to request access through the College Board's SSD online system. A link is included on this slide and will direct you to the online form for requesting access. 
please know that it may take between two and three days to receive your access code. SSD coordinators use the SSD online system to create student accounts and submit requests for accommodations for students taking College Board assessments, such as the PSAT and SAT. Many of your 11th graders already have accommodations submitted and are improved in the system. However, the Connecticut specific submission window is now open and will remain open through January 31st of 2023. You will also use this submission window to submit ELML 50% time and one half requests for students who need extended time. However, unlike accommodations, the ELML supports do not carry over from one year to the next. If you submitted an ELML request for 50% extended time this past fall for the PSAT, then the approved support will carry over for the Connecticut SAT school day. However, if 50% time in one half has not been entered for your ELML student this year, it must be requested in SSD before the submission deadline. Next slide. Um, I will, except we have a couple of questions that came in, and I want to stop at this point because they're related to CT said. So hold on for a second. So do they need to submit into CT SEDs for students taking the advanced placement exams in May? Accommodations for AP should be requested through the College Board SSD online system. However, districts can PPTs should use the CT sets a district wide assessment section of the, the CT sets program to document any accommodation students need on local assessments. And that may include an AP, it could include SAT, ACT. Um, just the, the, the point is to know that there is a section available in CT sets for students that need accommodations on school and district-wide assessment. Okay, and then there is another one sort of related to that. So if a parent or decides, or a student if they're 18, right. decides they don't want to use the accommodations that they're approved for, do they have to go back into CT SEDS and indicate that they're not using them? Our process to this point has been that for this is in regards to the SAT, that if a student chooses to waive a particular accommodation specific to the Connecticut SAT school day, then documentation may be provided either by the parent or guardian or the student if the student is of age, and that can be submitted to the school, the, the school office, That's and it would be maintained locally so that the student does not use that accommodation for the purposes of the Connecticut SAT school day. However, if the student believes that the accommodation that's determined at the time of a PPT decision is not appropriate, then that should be discussed at the time that the PPT convenes, and then the IEP should be adjusted to reflect those changes regarding the student's accommodations. Okay, well, there seems to be some confusion still about CT SEDS and how. And I, think, I think the C, if you have questions specific about CT SEDS, I would reach out to our office. That's it's an it's a new system. There are a lot of nuances and technicalities with it. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you have specific to statewide assessments. Otherwise, we have a, a point person within the Bureau of Special Ed that can address other questions related to CT sets. Yeah, I think it's related to like, how does this relate to SSD? It doesn't. Um, the, the CT sets is the statewide online assess. It's an online system for PPTs and for for plenty for Section 504. So it is a new system in which districts are inputting their students' uh, IEPs and Section 504s. SSD Online is a separate system used by the College Board for the purposes of reviewing and documented requested accommodations for students taking their College Board assessments. Great, thanks, Deirdre. And You're we'll welcome. just re reiterate to everyone that you can you can reach out to Deirdre or myself. We have our contact information at the end of the slide. 
And I've also probably emailed everybody that's on here. So you definitely have mine. Um, and there was something else too that was on here. That was what number to reach out to. Um, and then if you have uh, accommodations that are already in the College Board, um, do they need to be submitted again? That so would be no. if accommodations are already approved in SSD, then you there's nothing you'll need to submit in SSD on that student's behalf. The, the only time you're going to use SSD at this for the purposes of the Connecticut SAT school day is to reflect any changes in a student's accommodation based on a recent IEP or 504 plan. So in many cases, there won't be changes uh, to those plans, but if there are, or if you have students in which you submitted accommodations for an SAT or a PSAT and the student was denied, you can certainly request that accommodation again using the SSD using the SSD submission window that's now available to you. If you have a new student who's brand new to your high school from out of state that requires accommodations and wasn't previously approved the, through the College Board, then you'll create an account for that student in SSD. So um, again, I think the takeaway is that if, if students were already approved for a College Board assessment and there aren't changes to their plan, then nothing further needs to be done on their behalf. Great, thanks. There, there are a lot of questions, but maybe we'll just have to, to reiterate those um, a little bit later. So anyway, I'll, okay. I'll move on, move forward. Yeah, we'll, we'll move forward. And again, I'm available if any, of, if any of our participants wanna reach out at a later time and have a conversation. For our new SSD coordinators, I just wanna take a moment to review some of the tasks that you'll be responsible for in the months ahead. So for instance, SSD coordinators will plan, you'll, you'll work with your school administrators and your test coordinator to plan for the upcoming SAT school day administration to ensure that you know which students are approved for accommodations, what those accommodations are. You'll work with your coordinator to set up the online test setting for your students, make sure that you have available staff prepared and trained to administer the Connecticut SAT school day with accommodations. You'll also be responsible for downloading the non-standard administ administration report, otherwise known as the NAR. This is a report that's available in SSD online in January, and it includes a list of all of your students that are approved for accommodations and gives information about whether they're a one or two day tester and what and if there are specific uh, details associated with the, the accommodations that students are approved to use. So SSD coordinators will download the NAR, will use this report to help with their planning in the months of February and beyond. And you'll use the information on the NAR to populate the accommodations in the College Board TIED system. And that's what activates the embedded accommodations through the test delivery system when your students take the online Connecticut SAT school day. Next slide. There are a variety of accommodations available to your students. And I'm not going to spend much time delineating between accommodations that are available on the College Board assessments. Um, there, the SSD online includes a comprehensive list of accessibility supports for students taking the paper pencil assessments. But as indicated here on the slide, I've, I've highlighted some of the common online accommodations that are available to students for digital testing. So students have access to an embedded four function calculator, otherwise known as the Desmos. Kids have access to extended time for reading or math or both subject areas if they are eligible and need extended time. Students that ordinarily use an MP3 or a human reader on a paper or pencil assessment now have access to text to speech. And there are two kinds of text to speech available. For the majority of students that use text to speech, they'll have the text to speech of items and stimuli or retext only versus students that have a greater accessibility need. Perhaps they're 
they have, they're blind or have a substantial print disability, and they might need to have those graphics read to them by the computer, the graphics that might be associated with a math item or a formula. So if you have questions about what accommodations are available, the assessment guidelines that we have posted to our website is just one of many resources, including an accessibility chart that we have linked here on your slide. And then the College Board has a host of accommodation information available on the College Board digital website. Just gonna, because I wanna make sure we have enough time to provide a simulation of SSD online, I'm just gonna take a provide a quick overview of how some of these accommodations work or some of the considerations you should um, uh, to keep in mind as you're working with your students in preparation for the Connecticut SAT school day. So as a reminder, unlike Smarter Balanced or Next Generation Science Standards Assessments, the Connecticut SAT school day is a time test. So some students with a documented need will need extra time to complete the assessment. Um, the, the, uh, the, oper the options available are 50% extended time or double time. And it really is this decision is based on your students' needs. So for students who need 50% extend, extended time for reading, they, that accommodation will be applicable for the entire assessment. If you have a student that only needs the 50% or double time for mathematics, then you would select that specifically in SSD. We want you to keep in mind that extended time is not appropriate for all students that may need extra time. So we want you to think about the student's need in terms of their cognitive and physical load in completing a standardized test. And does the student use this type of extended time during classroom assessments? Another takeaway about the extended time is that we do offer um, extra break, the extra and extended breaks are built into the uh, time and a half and double time. Next slide. There are a variety of accommodations available to students who need access to reading or seeing the test, including the, the provision of a human reader, the provision of veil, a braille, excuse me, or the use of a communication device or assistive technology. So in lieu of large print or braille test booklets, in lieu of the pre-recorded MP3 player or human readers, online testing offers a variety of embedded features, such as Zoom, in which students can use the universal Zoom tool up to 51 point font. So this gives kids greater access to the text that they see on the computer screen. If greater font size is needed, then you can set that in tides. Students can also access a linear presentation of the test using Streamline. We offer enlarged mouse pointers and color contrast. So again, there are a variety of ways that we can support our students with print or visual disabilities that don't require them to take a paper pencil assessment. So again, please reference some of the materials that we have available on our website that will give you more details about these accommodations and the differences between the paper pencil and online version of the accommodation. So for your kids that may not need the 50% or double time, we, they may be eligible for extra or extended breaks. So think about your kids that might have a medical condition that requires them to uh, need to take a break and attend to their their physical or medical needs. That's one subset of the population that may need extra or extended breaks. So this slide outlines the different options available to your students. And like all accommodations, these kind of accommodations should be submitted in and approved in SSD. Another consideration for your students may pertain to their modified test settings. We have students that might benefit from testing in a small group setting, or maybe they need to test in a one-on-one -on -one setting because they're approved for a scribe. So think about the accommodations that your students need, whether they um, can test with a larger population of students or whether uh, a customized accommodation is needed. And again, this is something that should be identified in the student's IEP or 504 plan. 
And if you have students with special circumstances that are homebound or maybe hospitalized and, and require a, a, a specialized setting or require specialized accommodations, this is available uh, to students. Please document this in SSD online and certainly reach out to our office and we can work with you in conjunction with the College Board to make sure that your, your students' accessibility needs are met. Of course, there are other accommodations to consider. So if you have a student that requires the use of a human signer, permission to test their blood sugar or permission to take medication, these type of accommodations are also reflected, should be reflected in SSD, and they will require some special considerations when administering the assessment to the students. Most students can, can participate in the digital version of the SAT school day with, um, with the embedded accommodations. However, if you have students whose accessibility needs are, are such that the, they cannot access the online assessment, we do offer the paper, pencil, large print, or braille test materials. So in order to um, receive these materials, again, make sure that you've indicated the accommodations in SSD online, and SSD coordinators can order these materials directly through the College Board between February 1st and March 8th. We have a variety of supports available to English learners. Many of these materials can be downloaded from the Connecticut SAT School Day and distributed to students at the time of testing. If you do have EL MLs that benefit from 50% extended time, you'll request this support directly in SSD online through January 31st of 2023. And um, the support is available specifically for the Connecticut SAT school day, and students will receive the 50% extended time for all test sections. As mentioned, if you have a student with exceptional circumstances that may need accommodations beyond those available in SSD online or those indicated by the assessment guidelines published by the Connecticut State Department of Ed, please reach out and I will work with you and we'll, we'll collaborate with the College Board to make sure that your students' accessibility needs are met. We also have a small, small subgroup of 11th graders that will not participate in the Connecticut SAT School Day because they meet the criteria for the Connecticut alternate assessments for math, English, language, arts, and science. These are students that have a significant cognitive disability and meet specific criteria as outlined in the Connecticut alternate assessment system eligibility form. I've included information regarding the form and links um, within this presentation. So when you have a chance to look at the PDF, you can make special note of information that will support your teachers that administer the alternate assessment to their students. We do have a required training for teachers, a required online training that's available for teachers to administer, uh, to participate in now that gives them access to the data entry interface, which is used to submit this eligibility form, and the train status will give your teachers specific access to material that's needed at the time of test administration. So if you if you know that you have kiddos that qualify for the alternate, just make sure that they're the teachers administering this particular assessment that they have the right tied user status and and access to the training and that that if uh, that they have access to information they need in order to administer that these assessments in the spring. And again, if there are questions, I'm always available. The next slide indicates what the deadline is for submitting the eligibility form. And I, as indicated by the blue star, I, I want to drive home this particular deadline of December 23rd. It's really important that the eligibility forms for your 11th grade students are submitted in the data entry interface by the state if possible, because we essentially pull the list of kiddos from the data entry interface and we use that data, we actually remove those students from the file that's submitted 
to the College Board that populates the list of students in the College Board tied system. So we want to make sure that if a student is eligible for the alternate assessment, that they're not carried over into the tied system. We want to make sure that kids um, aren't accidentally administered the SAT school day. And the best way to manage that is to make sure that they're not on the roster. So again, please make special note of the deadline for submitting the eligibility form. We have a variety of resources available. Take a look on the Connecticut SAT School webpage, um, SAT School Day webpage. There's, we have links to the accessibility chart, assessment guidelines, College Board has um, an SSD module available to them, et cetera. So take a look at these resources and um, We'll share more information with you about the tithe system in the winter once we're ready to dive into that portion of test preparation. So, so I'm going to pause right now and I'm going to pass the presentation on to my colleague Adrian, who's going to walk you through the SSD online system. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you, Deirdre. So good morning, everybody, or good afternoon again. Um, so this is the point where if you are a returning SSD coordinator, and if you've submitted requests in the SSD online system before, this content is all the same. If you know how to do it, this may be the point where you might wanna drop off. If you are a new um, SSD coordinator, or if you feel like you need a refresher on how to request SSD accommodations in SSD online, you should stick around for this part, for this part of, the, the, um, of the presentation. So uh, we're gonna to go to the next slide. And let's talk a little bit about what SSD Online is. Um, yeah, so let's move on to the next slide. Great, thank you. So in SSD, SSD Online is the system that College Board uses for you to tell us and request accommodations for students. Um, all accommodations requests go through SSD Online for schools. So um, so it's important that if you're an SSD coordinator that you have access to SSD online. Um, if you're a new coordinator, you need to request access to SSD online. Uh, it, when you when you are able to use the, access the deck later, that there's a link in the deck where you go and you can request access to SSD online. It's also on our College Board webpage. Um, if you are a returning SSD coordinator, your previous SSD coordinator credentials will work. So you'll just want to test to make sure that you remember everything, um, but you will need to make sure that you request. Um, if you're a new SSD coordinator, you need to use the form to request access to SSD online, and then you will be provided access to that. So then once you do have access to SSD online, you sign into SSD online, and you will see the accommodations and supports dashboard. And this is the place, um, this is the place that basically everything starts off in SSD online. And if you look across the top, you're gonna see uh, a few kind of navigation items across the top, you, the, the access, how you get to the dashboard. There's some links in there. This is where you can access the pre-recorded audio um, accommodation if you have a student that is using that. Um, this is also where you will pull the non-standard administration report, the NAR. Uh, we will go through that in more detail in our training in early February. Um, and so there are some things across the top, but the dashboard is really where all the information is um, that SSD coordinators use to see who's in it, who have they requested accommodations for, and who do they need to add. So if we can go to the next slide. Oh, we'll, we'll keep going. There's some things that pop up here. Uh, so like I said, you can submit requests. Um, you can uh, you can also do some navigation to fit, like you can use it to, to narrow down the information that's available. So first thing, if you see at the top there where it says all schools, if you're an SSD coordinator for more than one school, and some people are, um, if you are, if you have, um, let's say, uh, let's say there is, uh, there is a kind of comprehensive high school and then a smaller program that's also maybe has a separate school code that's in your comprehensive high school and your SSD coordinator for both. Um, if you are SSD coordinator for more than one, you can toggle back and forth between the schools um, using that um, using that uh, drop down at the top. So you can see uh, you can see the students for all of your schools. Or you can choose the specific schools you may be SSD coordinator for. Then you can also, uh, from this dashboard, where you can see where that red box is, you can search for existing students by name or by their SSD 
ID number. And that's so if you're trying to look for a specific student, it makes it it makes it much easier than to go and kind of scroll through what could be a, a number of names on a list. If you especially with a large school, you can search for that student. And I think we have a couple more things on this slide. If you press, there you go. You can also filter by grade. Um, so uh, if you're looking for just your 11th grade students, you know, in the case of in the case of Connecticut SAT School Day, you can click on that 11, and you'll just see the 11th graders that are on your dashboard. And then you can filter by status. So the status means if you've submitted an accommodation um, and it's kind of pending review, you can see what are, what's still pending. Or if something is approved, you can you can go back and forth between those statuses to see and kind of manage the work that you need to do. Oh yes, and then at the very bottom, you can view the student profile. Now, this is just the first name that would be on a list of names in your in your dashboard. Um, you'll, you see some basic information here in the student profile, the student's name, their grade, their, their SSD ID number. Um, you'll see the, um, the accommodations that they have and kind of the status for each of those accommodations. If a student has more than five accommodations, in the dashboard view, you're only going to see five of them listed. But if you click on the student's name, you would then get into that student's profile page and that's where everything would be listed. Oh, and then we have uh, one other point to know here. Um, we have a single, it's it's an integrated dashboard. So you'll see there there's type of accommodations listed. So you'll see CBEL and SAA. Now SAA doesn't apply for Connecticut SAT school day, but CB and EL do. And so those are the two things you'll be using. CB refers to college board accommodations like we've talked about. And then EL refer, refers to the, um, the EL or ML supports that students may have. And so you can toggle back and forth and see just the students with the CB accommodations or just the students that may have EL time in one half. Um, so you can use those buttons for that purpose. So when you are um, when you're monitoring your dashboard and you're preparing to submit requests for students, the first thing you should do is look at the list of students that are on your dashboard for your school and see which students are already in SSD online and what accommodations they have. And that will help you be able to figure out do you who do you need to submit accommodations for? The other thing, even for the students that are listed, you're going to want to make sure that the information that is in SSD online for your students is still correct. Um, so that that means just kind of looking at the demographic information. Is their name spelled correctly? Is their grade information correctly? Is their date of birth correct? Those types of things. But then also you want to make sure that the accommodations that are in the system for their students are still accurate. You know, students have changes to their IEP or 504 plans. And so you want to make sure that if there were changes since the last time somebody was in SSD online to, uh, to submit or, or look at those accommodation requests, that it's still accurate for what the students need. So, so does, does the approved accommodation match the student's current plan? So to submit a new request, um, what, a, what, a, what an SSD coordinator would do, uh, the first thing an SSD, uh, let me just move on to my notes here just so I have it for you. The first thing an SSD coordinator would do is, um, is uh, so you, you would click new request to submit a new request. You see that blue button there. And that is what someone would click. And this screen would pop up. So this screen basically is asking you what kind of request would you like to submit? You'll have the opportunity and for college board or for the college board SAT or the Connecticut SAT school day, uh, the you're gonna pick one of you're just gonna pick from the top two things on this on this screen. You'll pick either college board approved accommodation or English learner support. So you'll pick one of them. And then once you pick that, you're going to see uh, you're, you'll see another screen kind of pop up and it'll be a, a request, a new request screen. So in the new request screen, the first thing you're going to do and the first thing we will have you do is enter the student's name, first name and last name and the school that you are at. OK, and you're going to search. You know, so you would enter the first name, last name, the school, and click the blue search button. And this is to just make sure that that student isn't already listed in your in your accommodation uh, in, in your dashboard. That you don't already have requests in for that student. Assuming that you don't, right? If you don't see, the, if you see the student listed there, it's like, oh wait, they already have accommodations. I'm just going to go right to that student profile. If the student isn't listed here, 
then you then you press that student not listed button at the bottom. And then you'll be given the interface where you can add a new student to SSD online for your school. And so in this um, in this uh, in this interface here, um, you would click. Uh, so you would enter the student information, the student's name, first name, last name, date of birth, the school, expected graduation date and year and gender. Now, what it's important that you make sure you're entering information correctly um, because uh, because that is what creates the record for the student in our system. And that's what use, that, that's what's used to kind of match up against the data that the state provides us when we register students. Um, so you just want to make sure you're entering information accurately. Um, you'll also see some more information about entering additional contact information, student address, phone number, and email as well. And you're going to need to also be sub you're going to also need to submit uh, information about more information about the student, their disability, the uh, the type of plan that you have for that student, um, and uh, and the the student's accommodations needs in this system. So before you do this, you're going to want to make sure you have this information all available to you. So uh, so like I said, you want to gather student disability information. Uh, the information about their plan. It's it's best if you have the plan actually maybe with you. Um, the Connecticut documentation form. That form um, that form is provided for submissions for SAT uh, SAT School Day for Connecticut SAT School Day. So that if you're if you if you're asked for documentation, you just submit that form to us. So you're going to want to have that available to you. And also um, you're going to be asked for parent consent um, throughout uh, you know at, at a point in the process. And as we've kind of talked about. Uh, already that the the IEP or 504 is kind of the parent consent for um, for the Connecticut SAT school day administration and and your request to support that and so you don't need something separate for parent consent for these submissions. There's going to be one more there that'll pop up, Michelle, and then we can. Yeah, you'll see where you can say if you've obtained if you've obtained consent, and the answer because you're because you're basing it on the IEP or 504, and this is for a state test. The answer is yes. You don't need something separate. So when you start the request, uh, the first thing that you're going to be asked to provide is the disability information, and you're going to need to you're going to need to identify the accommodations that you are requesting for that student to support uh, to support their uh, their equitable ability to take the test. And you'll need to provide the plan information, as I mentioned, the IEP or 504 plan information, not the IOP, not the IEP or 504 plan itself, but rather just if if the student has an IEP or a, a 504 plan. And then once you get to the end of submitting that information to us, you'll need to re just review that and, su and submit the request. So I'm going to show you the next couple slides. We'll walk through these screens of how you do it. So when you're identifying the disability, you're going to see a screen like this. That has some that has some categories of um, of uh, disabilities and then some specifics within each category. So you'll want to scroll through to make sure that you are clicking on the disabilities that uh, the disability or disabilities that the student may have. Um, and uh, and this this is a this is a, a you know a, a list with a number of options. So you do want to scroll through and look at everything. You want to make sure that you're identifying the disabilities that the student has. And um, in some cases, you'll you know you'll see a, you'll see an example here like uh, communication disorder and speech and language. And there are a couple of things you can check, but there are also some other things. There may be there may be the student may have a disability that is not listed. If the student has a disability that's not listed, you can click other you know other disability in that category and provide that information to us. Now, please, I would we, we really recommend that if if there is something that is listed that matches what the student's disability is, please don't click other, click on what, what is listed. Only use that other box if, if, if there isn't something that is listed that matches the student's disability. And then if you've provided the disability information, then you'll provide information about the accommodations that you're requesting for that student. Student. Now there are uh, there are a few categories of accommodations as Deirdre kind of talked about, right? There's extended time, ex extra and extended breaks, reading, seeing text, recording answers, modified setting, and then there's other. And so the accommodations are organized in these categories when you're going through to request them. Um, again, like I mentioned about the disability, you'll want to make sure 
that you're choosing something. If it's available in a category, please choose that. Only use other if what you need isn't listed, okay? That'll just make things go more smoothly for everybody. And so when you click in and you're clicking on accommodations, you, let's say you click into the extended time uh, section, you'll see that there's the opportunity in extended time to request extended time based on sections of the test. Now, as we talked about, um, you're going to see some things here that um, that may not be, you know, we don't have a, a listening section of of the SAT, um, but, uh, but, you know, there are four, um, for AP tests, for example, there are listing sections. So you'll see the options here for everything because this system supports accommodations requests for all of the College Board assessments. Um, but so you would go through with the extended time and you would you can go through based on sections or types of uh, types of sections of tests that we have. And so you, you just kind of choose what is needed or, or what you need to request for that student for, um, for each of these types of sections. And then, then you'll, after you put in the information about the accommodations you're requesting, you will then answer the questions about what kind of plan does the student have. So, in the case of in the case of what we're talking with talking about with um, with Connecticut SAT School Day, we're talking about an IEP or a 504 plan. So you'll click one of those. Um, you'll be asked kind of when the current plan went into effect. That is, it is this is general. This is not you don't have to look it up on the plan and get an exact date, right? If you know that the students had the uh, had this this plan in effect. Um, you know, for the year, maybe it's, you know, or, or, or it was originally requested maybe two years ago and it's been the same, you can put that information in based on uh, your, your, a general time frame that helps us to understand it. And then the other question there is if the student's first educational plan, if this is the student's first plan or if they've had other plans before. Um, and you see there's also a question about if it was was the original was the student's original education plan? If you know this, you're you're kind of you know you may not know this. If you if you do know it, or at least as far back as you know the student's plans, what kind of plan was it? You'll also um, indicate if the accommodation that you're requesting is used in the student's current plan um, and used currently on classroom tests. And then um, you'll provide some additional information about the process for determining that, that, that we use for determining students' needs. So you'll just give us some more information about that particular student um, and, um, and and who um, who was involved in the kind of resulting decision for the, the, the classroom accommodations and the kind of documentation that you used to be able to make that decision. And then, you, then you're going to review all of that information. You want to make sure that it's all accurate that you put in. Um, it is far easier to see it here and make a change if it's inaccurate here than it is to go through once it's already in our system and has created kind of a, a record for the students. So do take the time to review it and make sure it's accurate. And we do ask that you identify the student's next intended college board date so that we can we can just have that in our system. We know what we know uh, we know when this this needs to be kind of reviewed by. And then if you are asked to provide supporting documentation um, for the Connecticut SAT school day requests, you don't have to provide additional documentation. That's when you use the, the Connecticut SAT documentation form and you just upload that here at this point. And that lets us know that this is a Connecticut SAT school day request and you don't have to provide additional documentation. And then you hit submit. And then you'll get this pop up about terms and uh, terms and agreement. So you're confirming that you've at, you've entered accurate information. Um, where it says here, if you're you are submitting school based accommodations for students, this really refers to weekend testing. If you have a student um, who may also end up taking weekend testing and they have certain accommodations that are what we call school based, they don't happen at the test center on a Saturday, but they um, but they they are instead administered by the school. Um, you know, in the in their school uh, for that student in a in a testing window related to weekend testing, it's just letting you know that that's what this is for that student, and so um, and so you're kind of acknowledging that you know that that student, if they take weekend testing, would not be testing at a weekend test center, but instead at your school. So you you read that, you agree to it, you hit agree and continue, and then that is the submission of the accommodations request for a student.
A couple of things to think about um, when you are going through this, this process of looking at approval for your students. You wanna start, as I mentioned, by reviewing the accommodations for your existing grade 11 students. Um, your existing grade 11 students, you wanna make sure that all of your grade 11 students have requests in the system. If they don't, you know you have to submit an accommodations request for them, and you wanna make sure that it's accurate. If it's not accurate for a student, you can go through a change process in SSD Online, you go into the student's account and you can you can request a change, the student's profile in SSD Online. Students that have, as, as we mentioned in uh, a few times already, students that already have approved accommodations from previous years. So let's say the student has accommodation approval uh, for PSAT and MSQT in the fall, that your school gave uh, PSAT and MSQT in the fall, the student was approved for, let's say, 50 uh, time and a half, 50% extended time. OK, if that student already has that approval from the fall, that stays with the student through the rest of their high school career and one year beyond. So if that is still what the student needs, there's no change, then you don't have to do anything else for that student. And if your student, if, if you put this information in and your student status is pending and, and it's been a little while and you're not sure what's going on, reach out to Deirdre at CSDE. She works with us to take a look at requests that may be in pending status for a while and to figure out what may be happening. So, um, so you, are, uh, you are welcome to reach out to CSDE if you have a question about timing. Um, a few things to think about with requests and digital testing. As I mentioned, the SSD online system is used for all College Board assessments. And so, um, so you're putting in, when you put something into SSD online for your students, you're gonna be requesting based on what a student needs on all of their tests, including paper pencil tests, okay? So even though you are giving the SAT in a digital format, you should be thinking about what does the student need on all tests, including paper pencil tests, and that's what you're submitting in the um, in SSD online. And then there is, a, there is a crosswalk that we have for SSD coordinators to use to determine what to set in the CAI TIDE system when a, so if a student is approved for, uh, let's say a student is approved for MP3 pre-recorded audio accommodation in SSD online, right? That crosswalk will help you look and see what your options are. You're looking at, okay, in a digital testing environment, that is actually gonna be listed in Tide as text to speech. And so the crosswalk will help you determine what you set in Tide for the student to actually take the test. And Tide configurations, and administering the digital test to students, all of this, which is which is another kind of chunk of information, we'll cover this. Um, we'll cover this in the training that we will offer in early February. So that is when you guys will have access into the Tide system. So we'll do that training when you have access, so you can so you can kind of apply what you what you learn from us right away. And that's. That's all we have for the for the content for today, really. Um, you'll see you have contact information for Michelle and Deirdre and uh, and College Board Customer Service on here. I see Michelle's popped back on. Uh, do you want to do any wrap up uh, wrap up stuff? There's a couple of questions that we didn't get to. Right. One is: Is there any way that we can get confirmation that accommodations have been removed for a student? So your the the confirmation would be look in SSD online and see if they have see if the profile indicates that 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 accommodation is no longer in there. If it's still showing, that means that the accommodation has not been removed for the student. And so in that case, I would say you reach reach out to Deirdre. She'll work with us on our side to check in why you know why that hasn't been removed if you've requested it. And then there was another question about if students come into the building after the deadline to submit accommodations, which is January 31st, what do they do? And I and then we'd say that you continue to submit accommodations for new students. You just want to maybe let us know if if it's taking a while so we can make sure they're getting approved. So we don't want anyone. We don't want you waiting for a student to be approved and not being able to test them when you choose to test in March. So. I think that was about it. Deirdre, were there other ones that I that you didn't address? I know Deirdre had been like addressing them. You know, there were a handful of questions that related to CT SEDS. And I just I just want to drive home that accommodations that you submit in SSD online should reflect what's indicated by the students IEP and 
or Section 504 plan. So regardless of which program the IEP in 504 in is sort of irrelevant um, to this process, it's just that um, the accommodations requested for College Board should be supported by the student's documented plan. And as Michelle and Adrian indicated, I am available if you need support in having special accommodations approved for your students, if you have um, some extenuating circumstances that arrive a little bit closer to the window that you haven't or were unable to account for um, beforehand. So I am available to, to help work with you and the College Board to make sure that everything's in place for test day. Thanks for taking time out. We know that you're really busy, so thanks for spending the last hour with us, and we'll see you soon. Yep, thank you, everybody. Just thanks again, too, um, for all the work that you're doing and you will be doing on this program to support it. And then um, I realized that I didn't show a picture of my dog like I always do. There's Stella. Um, so thanks again. Thanks, counselors. Um, for all the work that you're doing for our kids and their families and also administrators and teachers. Thanks again. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.